we've got this list of cool Albert Einstein quotes and we're going to pretend that we're we're Albert Einstein enthusiasts and we've decided I'm going to learn these quotes and I'm just going to be that person who whenever I think it's appropriate I'm going to say well you know I think this is best summed up by when Albert Einstein said blah 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 um, so the first thing we want to do if you were going okay I want to learn this list of quotes the first thing I would do is I think well they're all Albert Einstein so I'm going to put them in one memory palace and that memory palace is going to be my Albert Einstein memory palace and um, you know as some of you know um, when you first put information into a memory palace that's going to be where that information is stored until basically until it goes into your long-term memory so um, so what it does is it kind of acts like a file in your brain so as you as you want to pull out an Albert Einstein quote you just go to the right file and you can see the memory palettes with all the information once it goes into your long-term memory you no longer need that anymore because you just know it inherently like how you know you know all the other things you know how to ride a bicycle and brush your teeth so so when I say you need to put it in a memory palace that would be for long term, if you wanted to remember this for long term, I mean you need to put it somewhere where you're happy to have this to be just about Albert Einstein until for however long it takes to go from your short term memory to your long term memory and you're confident that you know it. Um, and so for everyone that could be a little bit different. So uh, it sort of often depends on how regularly you sort of say the quotes or go back over them. Um, for me, it's normally a couple of months in terms of I know the information that whole time but I need to refer to my memory palace and the images and then after a couple of months it tends to just be you know I can just it's just something I know and then I could reuse that palace for new information that's something completely different does anyone have any questions about that all good um, so I want you to choose a place that you know well uh, where we're going to put this information. If you think you might like to learn these for longer term rather than just for this lesson, uh, then obviously choose one that you're not intending to use for something else. The other thing is, is to choose a place that would make sense to put Albert Einstein quotes because then you know exactly which file in your brain you're looking for when you're looking for the information. So that's just like, you know, you go to C drive and you go, well, I know I'm looking up um, cooking recipes so I go to my cooking folder and I know it's Spanish so then I go to Spanish it's the same sort of thing you're trying to label your files well so you find them easily so for me uh, when I think of Albert Einstein I think of maths and when I think of maths I think of a good friend of mine who is a maths lecturer and I've been to her house so that's where I would put this information because that makes sense to me um, I don't remember her house very well I've I only went to the house, in fact, I've, she's moved houses now, but for some reason I only thought of the first house, the time I first went to her house. Um, and I only went to that house twice. And that was um, about, you know, over 10 years ago. So, um, so I only remember that place quite vaguely and that doesn't matter. So you don't need to, when I say you need to choose a place that you know well and you know a pathway through, that's in an optimal world where everything works and everything's perfect and you've got endless memory palaces. The reality is, is, you know, there's a limited number of those and I use them for training. Um, but the ones that are a little bit more in my distant memory, you can still well and truly use them. You just need to, as you make the palace, you'll find bits where you go, oh, I think the bathroom was down that way. And so you just make that the new reality. That just because our memories are malleable, it's fine, it works. So you go, yeah, the hallway was there and I don't remember much about it, but it was sort of dark, it wasn't well lit. So you can incorporate that as the senses that you remember for that, for that part of the memory path. So, um, so choose a palace now, I'll just give you like 10 seconds. Choose somewhere that would remind you of Albert Einstein for some reason. It could be any sort of connection someone who's really clever, really mathsy, they've got mad hair, whatever it springs to mind. Mm -hmm. um, how many loco will you need? Well, I don't know how many we're gonna get through. So basically I've put up this big exciting list for you because by the end of our session, because I wanna make sure there's plenty of time for asking questions. Um, so by the end of this session, we'll, you know, we'll at least have remembered two or three of them. But, um, so that would only be probably two or three loco. So we're basically going to put we're going to put one quote 
per loci, per location. And that's because these aren't particularly long sentences. Um, if it was a little bit longer, I would maybe split it up. But I also just want to show you that you actually don't need to um, spread information out quite as much as you might be doing. So this is more for the people who've done a lot of memory training. You know, we tend to think we need more space than we need and it's, it's, not, it's not right. So, um, so what I want you to do is I want you to stand outside the front of this place, wherever you've chosen, and really see it as we were talking about before. So, um, you know, see as much detail as you can about it. I don't remember an awful lot about this place, but I do get a feel for how it felt to me. And I know there were lots of plants around and I, I'm pretty sure I can see the colour of the door. So I'm just going to go with that and, and believe that that's... Because whatever I see first now is most likely what I'm going to see next time. Um, and outside the front door, we're just going to put something, again, to remind us that these are Albert Einstein quotes. So it's, it's like a little heading at the top of a Word document. So, so you need an image that reminds you of Albert Einstein. So when I say Albert Einstein, something probably comes into all your minds if you think about what image it conjures up for you. For me, it conjures up, um, there's this classic black and white photo that you see everywhere of Albert Einstein where his hair's like this. And that really sticks in my head because when I'm studying a lot, my hair does the same thing. And I go into the mirror and I go, oh my gosh, I look, I look disgraceful, but I can't look like Albert Einstein. So, um, so I see that picture of him with his hair all, you know, like he's crazy clever up sticking up. But it also reminds me of those... I didn't do much chemistry and, and, and such at school, so forgive me for my, um, if I get this wrong, but those molecule things you see and they're like balls like this and they're connected by little metal things and you can play with them. It also reminds me of that. So I'm going to put that in his hair, sort of like sticking up a lot of place just to make it really kind of memorable to me. And then I'm also just going to go, well, I want to kind of interact this where possible with the location as well, because that's also going to help me. So I'm just kind of, I'm going to see him. He's standing at my friend's front door. I'm also just going to do this thought process where I go. And that makes sense because she's into math. So it makes sense that Albert Einstein would knock on her door. So you're also doing this, this further kind of thought process. And I'm just going to see him glancing around like he's thinking, gosh, this is a lovely yard. Because I remember she had a beautiful yard. I don't remember anything about it other than it was lovely and green. So that's sort of interacting that there. And then we're going to go just inside that front door to place the first quote. So when you go inside the front door, um, choose a place to put this information. So probably just inside the front door is not good because it's too generic and too bland. So you might want to look around just inside the front door and see, you know, is there a little table? Um, is there like a, you know, a coat rack? Find something that's not just a blank wall because blank walls, blank walls can be problematic. So whenever I come across a blank wall in a memory card, I kind of decide to put a picture there that didn't exist because then at least I can work with something. Um, so choose something that you see just inside the front door and Try and see it as clearly as you can. And again, if it's a place that you don't remember very well, you can kind of half make it up. So I seem to recall that just inside the front door, um, this friend of mine had a lot of kids um, daily stuff that you need, like shoes and coats hanging down and there were bags. You know, it's your classic kind of, I've got lots of kids and not enough time. And so things just pile up by the door. So I'm going to choose... I am actually just going to choose the wall because there's all these shoes on the floor and there's coats hanging down and I'm just going to place the information kind of there on top of the shoes. So does everyone, make sure you're not just following me along like a lovely tale that you actually have a place that you're seeing in your head. Everyone's not at me like good school children. Oh yes, I do. I do. I'm playing this computer game on the side, but I, I haven't. Make sure you really are seeing a place for yourself. Um, and then we're going to place this, um, this first quote. So when you're, when you're, <clears throat> when you're trying to remember text, um, there's a couple of little things you want to do first. So the first thing to do always is to just kind of read it through and get a feel for it. How does it make you feel? Do you understand it? Um, and that's important because we don't want to also just parrot learn things and then not understand what they mean as well. So, so the first thing you do, especially if, you know, you were studying something, if it was studying, um, you know, like even language, how verbs 
a verb and how it works, how it hangs together, how you use it. So you want to understand it. So the first quote, I just read it out and we go, anyone who has never made a mistake has never tried anything new. So I, you know, I have a think about it. I comprehend it. I go, oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I like that. You know, and I get what it's trying to tell me. Um, you know, it makes sense. So that's the first step. And then the second step is to break it up into parts and to also see what words kind of stand out to me. So, um, so to me, anyone who has never made a mistake, I feel like there wants to be a comma there almost. So I'm going to think anyone who has never made a mistake, that's one image has never tried anything new. And that's another image. And the words that kind of stick out to me, there's two nevers here. There's two nevers. Mistake sticks, sticks out, anyone, new, you know, like, and I just kind of, it's almost like just brainstorming for a second. Do any images naturally come to mind when I hear those things? Um, and then we're going to do that more formally. So that's sort of like the informal part where you're just kind of getting the grasp. And if you, if you had this written out, you know, I would probably, um, like I'd underline the two bits separately and I'd probably put circles around words that I think are important to remember in order to get it right. And then the other thing you do um, with text is it's best not to try and create an image for every single word. So if you do that, especially if you're going to do some speaking, so let's say you're remembering something for a meeting or you've got a conversation with someone that you need to have that's going to be uncomfortable and so you want to pre-learn it and but make it look natural um, or you want to go and talk to your boss. Or, you know, there's lots of situations where you'd really like to carefully plan an answer, learn it and then deliver it like it's natural. Um, so the best way to do that is to have images for parts of the words and the other words you fill in via basically through a little bit of practice. And if you really keep missing something you want, then you add an image or you adjust your image. Um, and something else I find just before we make this, you're going, you're all like going, okay, let's learn this quote already. Um, but I just want to say one more thing. And that is that a lot of people who I coach, for a long time until you've had a lot of practice tend to make their images and their stories too abstract uh, or with too many components for the information that they're trying to remember. So you're trying to get away with an image or a story that you see that most accurately describes what you're seeing. Because basically when you go back through the memory palace, you want to look at the image and you want to be able to describe it. And by describing it, you're saying the quote. So it should be like um, looking at a picture in an art gallery, this image you're making, and it's very clear to see what's going on. And if you had a little child with you and you wanted to describe it to them, you'd be able to say, well, as you can see here, you know, there's a dinner party happening, but someone at the end of the table is clearly not happy and everyone else is laughing. So you want to make it so if someone else saw your image, they could almost describe it as much as possible. So when people first start out and they, they're having problems and then I say to them, so describe to me the image that you have, the story you've made. It's, it's like, you know, there's a zucchini here and then a, a, a frog runs over and jumps on top of it. And, and, and it's, it's like, the, it's so bizarre and abstract that it's, I'm not surprised that they can't remember it. Um, but that said, there's also that thing where I said, everyone's going to have a slightly different association. So if I thought of the word yummy, I might think of a Ukrainian dish, but you might think of olives. So I might see an olive, you know, a Ukrainian dish sitting at the end of the table and you might see an olive if you're trying to remember the word yummy. So let's look at this quote. Anyone who has never made a mistake has never tried anything new. All right. Anyone who has never made a mistake. So the first thing I would do is I'm very clearly in my location. So I can see the shoes and I'm on top of them or the location is and there's the jackets there. So see your own location. And then I think if I had to make an image to describe anyone who's never made a mistake, what would that be? Now, um, you have a little think about it for yourself, what that, what that looks like to you. But some examples might be, um, there might be someone who you know who never makes a mistake. You, you just, they, they're always right. Or it might be someone you know who thinks they never make a mistake, but they make lots of them. Um, or it could be that you don't think of a person, but you think of um, maybe um, like test papers 
and they've got ticks all down. There's just no mistakes and there's stacks of these all on top. And as you flip through them, you can see there's just, there's not a single mistake. So choose one of those or, or something that makes sense to you that would describe anyone who's never made a mistake. So what we're trying to do here is to remember this quote. We're trying to think of an image where if we visualized it, that would represent the information anyone who's never made a mistake. I might go in and start talking about what my, what my image is, what I've chosen, and then that might make a little bit more sense. And it is going to get a little bit crazy. So, um, you know, you just have to trust this is going to work and then just see by the end of the lesson, you, you hopefully have these quotes. So for me, anyone who's never made a mistake, the thing that makes sense to me is seeing a list, a whole stack in my brain of test papers and they've got lots and lots of ticks in red, like someone's come and marked it and put ticks all over it, like there's never been a mistake. And you can see test after test after test, there's no mistake, never a mistake. And I'm putting that on top of these shoes in my head. I'm in this first location and I've put them there on top of the shoes. And because it's all messy there, they're kind of spilling into different places and, um, you know, and all over the place. I would put all those test papers there um, but because I've practiced this a lot, I can already tell I'm going to forget the word anyone. Because when I come back and I look at that image later, I'm, I'm probably going to remember never made a mistake, but I'm not going to remember how it started. So, so I need to fix that image a little bit so that it represents anyone who has never made a mistake. So for me, how I would fix that is I would think anyone, anyone, how can I remember how can I remember the word anyone? And so I kind of break it into parts. I go, anyone. Well, it sounds like a one. There's one in there. There's definitely a one. So I see one of those cartoon, um, you know, a cartoon number one, like you would see on a kid's TV show where they're trying to teach kids to count. So it's got little arms and legs sticking out of it, but it's clearly a one. And this little anyone is sitting there with the shoes and it, looking at anxiously at its test papers going, anyone who's never made a mistake is in that's that. So just kind of take a second and check that you can see some sort of, um, some sort of picture that represents anyone who's never made a mistake. You can see it in your head. And so that's the process you would do now. And then the next thing I would normally do is I would look away from the page. And so this is what I want you to do next. And I would just check, I can say the words, anyone who's never made a mistake. And at this point, it should be pretty easy because it's not so many words. Um, but later on, you'll see as we go through this a little bit, there will be bits where you're forgetting a word and then I can help you fix that. So that's the bit where you're going to really get some value from it. So we've got this. So was everyone fine with those, that first little bit? Everyone, any, any, everyone, anyone who's never made a mistake. Um, and then we want to tie on the next part, which is has never tried anything new. So now we need to make another image or adjust our current image so that it represents the next part of the sentence. Now, if you just adjust your current image, what you need to do is when you go back to see this again, you need to make sure that it's played like a movie. So you see the first bit and then you see it change, if that makes sense. So you don't wanna just see the, you don't wanna change it so you only ever see the finished product. You want to see the first part and then it changed. And I tend to do that quite a lot because um, that version rather than a sec second image, because it's less confusing later on when you're looking back at these crazy stories and going, you know, what does this mean? What am I trying to remember from this here? Um, so we've got anyone who's never made a mistake, that's where we're up to, has never tried anything new. So an obvious kind of thing to do, I, I think it's obvious to me, but and you might have something completely different is I've got these test papers that this little number one's looking at with all the cor correct ticks. Um, I've never made a mistake here. And then I kind of, I don't see myself come over, but I kind of like zoom in, like I'm leaning over to have a look myself. And I kind of go like this through the papers and I'm like, it's the same question over and over and over again. No wonder, no wonder you've never made a mistake. You've never tried anything new. It's just the same question over and over. You know, 
what is your name? Anastasia, tick. What is your name? Anastasia, tick. What is your name? Anastasia, tick. So they've never tried anything new. So you just want to look away from, you're looking at the quotes, look away from the quote and try and see the image in that location and see if you can say the full quote. What's quite normal when you're first starting out doing this is that one word gets missed or, um, you know, like uh, an example would be you go, anyone who has never made a mistake didn't try anything new rather than the second never. You know, so um, so the way to overcome little mistakes like that, once, we, once you see this image a couple of times, it'll be, you know, you'll just know that's what it means and you'll just say it. Um, but in the first instances, if you just go over it a few times, like you, you say it, you look at it, you go, oh, I didn't say has never the second time I said didn't try anything new. So just that like thought process and then you look away and you do it again, you'll probably get it right over a couple of, you know, iterations of it. But but if it keeps happening, then you just adjust the image just a little bit. So the, the comfort to take from this process, because it seems quite like it's hard work, right? But the comfort to take from it is as you actually practice learning like this, it's still hard work, but it's very quick. So an example would be, you know, I've been doing this for three years um, and obviously I've done a lot of training, but if I wanted to remember this list on my own, it would be, you know, it wouldn't be more than sort of 10 minutes work and I would have it the next day, you know, correct. So, so once you get good at it, it is a lot faster. <clears throat> so you just want to keep that in mind that you're doing this work and it should feel like hard work because you're exercising your brain. So you wouldn't go to the gym and expect to do like lots of weights and get really strong, but you didn't have to work at all and it happened overnight. And so it, it does take a little bit of effort. Okay. So I'm going to assume that everyone's got that one. We're going to move on to the next one. So now what you want to do is you want to go in your mind to what would be a natural next location after the one you've chosen just inside the front door. Um, so for me, I'm going to go um, just after that, I believe from what I remember, she had a little lounge room there and there was a little, um, the closest um, sofa, the closest couch to me. I'm going to choose that. And it was, uh, it was, I think it was like a blue color and it had like a rough material. I think it could, I could be completely different, but it doesn't matter because it's going to work. So just make sure you can actually see your place and also see, does it like make you feel anything in terms of, you know, um, some places make you feel something as in it's dark or it's really nice and bright or it's always got a nice smell or it's a bit stinky like old socks, you know, does does that place kind of make you feel anything or do you know, do you see the light kind of what type of light it is and you know, how try you actually just try and place yourself there and, and what you essentially would see. And then we're going into the next one and the next one's a little bit longer, but that's going to be fine. So first thing again, we read through it. So we go, imagination is more important than knowledge. Knowledge is limited. Imagination encircles the world. And you go, oh, that's nice. Isn't that sweet? Yes, I understand that. I know what that means. So you just sort of get a feel for that overall. And then I start to kind of go, okay, what are the main, you know, what are the main words that I would underline or highlight? Um, you know, it would be imagination. Is it more important than knowledge? So I've got imagination and knowledge. And then knowledge comes back again, is limited. And then imagination comes back again. And then I like this, encircles the world, like instantly I just see something, you know, if I wanted to make an image encircling the world, that seems like that's going to be really easy, that bit. And the other thing that's really clear to me is that there's three clear parts. There's this in terms of if you are visualising a story, imagination is more important than knowledge. And then knowledge is limited and then imagination encircles the world. So they're the three kind of separate components to this quote. So that's the first step, just like identifying those things. And then you go, okay, well, let's tackle this first sentence. Imagination is more important than knowledge. So I'm just going to make an image for me that literally shows that if I looked at it in my head. So, so when someone says the word imagination to you, something was and i said what do you picture when i say imagination just see what you picture in your head so i see um i see like what would be seen on a 1970s or 80s pixar 
beginning film and there's like streamers and fireworks going off. And so that's, that's when I think of a mansion or someone's head, like it's coming out of someone's head or something. So I see that and I'm putting that on the top of the couch. So I've moved up from the ground. So I was kind of on the ground level with the first quote and now I've moved up onto on top of the couch. And I've got this, um, this picture of like, you know, all these streamers to, to represent imagination. And then at the other end of the couch on the top, I'm going to picture something to represent knowledge. So again, when you say the word knowledge, it's, you're going to think of something. Something's it's going to be your first thought. If you had to get an image for knowledge, you would have one. Um, so I've got, there are, sometimes you have a couple of choices in your head or that or that or that. So for me, something that clearly kind of, you know, capsule, it, it encapsulates that feeling is like a little shell, boxed shelf of books. You know, you get those box sets of dictionaries, you know. So that's what I see when I think of knowledge, you know, like a whole heap of really dense books. So, so I'm going to put that at the other end of the couch. So I've got imagination and then knowledge. And then we just kind of need something to link that together so it's going to make sense. Um, and those words are is more important. So when I'm trying to think of something that would represent is more, you know, um, the first thing that comes to my head is when I studied maths and there's that, I'm just going to draw it the other way for you guys. You know that thing in maths that goes is more than, greater than or equal to, so more than. If you don't know that one, you think of something else that means is more important, just some image. And I'm going to place them between the two. So I see imagination and then I see that the symbol is more important. I'm trying to draw that the right way for you guys. Um, imagination, I think I did less that time, is more important than knowledge. So that seems like a pretty clear um, image to me. So just make sure you can see a version of that that makes sense to you in your next location and try and check that you've put it at a different height and probably a different size as well. So in this one, I've made this quite big because it takes up the whole couch top. So does everyone have an image to represent that text? Yep. And then do the same thing. Make sure you're on mute, which you all are, don't worry. And look away and just kind of go say the words over again. And check you've got imagination is more important than knowledge. So imagination is more important than knowledge. So then we've got knowledge is limited. So in my head, what I would do here, um, if I was trying to remember that from the next part is I've got my image and I've got imagination. I can see it's more than knowledge, except I've got to remember important. I already noticed that that's the bit I'm going to forget. Imagination is more important than knowledge. Then we've got knowledge is limited. So I'm now going to look at the knowledge part. So the story goes, I see the whole thing. Then I look at the knowledge part. So there's like a little pathway of its own in this, you know, it's almost like there's a little tiny memory palace in each of these quotes, right? We've seen the first bit and then we look at the last bit, which is the knowledge. And then I've got to go, knowledge is limited. And I've got to make that into an image. So, you know, what's the first thing that springs to your mind? You could make the bookcase like shrink a little bit. For me, um, because again, I don't know why, it's probably because we're talking about mathematics. Um, limited if there's a symbol that when you set you when you reach the limit of something if you remember that from school or college or whatever or if you don't do a different version but I, I can't actually even clearly see what mathematical symbol it is but I know that there's a symbol for limited limit so I'm gonna see what I think is roughly that mathematical symbol on either side of that bookcase which means knowledge so knowledge is limited so you make yours then, so imagination is more important than knowledge, knowledge is limited. And then you've got imagination encircles the world. Well, that's kind of cool too, because we can still take that same image. So we've got imagination more important than knowledge, knowledge is limited. Then I'm going to go back in my head to the image of imagination that I've got. And I'm going to see it encircling this couch now, which I now see has like a picture of the world on it. So you have a think about what, you, what image, how you could adjust this story that you have in your head. You can choose the same one or you can, you know, you can do a different one to try and get that last. You're allowed to keep flicking your eyes back to the quote. 
So you can put your head up, you try and say, you see the image and you go, hang on, is that right? You can check. That's also fine at this point. So now what we want to do is we want to, before we'd go on to the next quote, what you'd do is you'd go back in your head and you'd go, okay, I can see the front door and see your picture of Albert Einstein there or your, you know, whatever it is to remind you that these are quotes by Albert Einstein. And then you want to go into your first location and it would be natural to go, oh, I can, especially when you first start, oh, I can see something of an image here, but I'm not quite sure what this is. And if that happens, take a quick glance at the screen and then look away and see if you can say the first quote. So give the first one a go now. So the first quote's kind of okay. So now you can either just try and do it straight up or you can just quickly glance at that imagination, yep, and then try and see if you can remember it. The second one. I'll just say while you're doing this, if you have any problems, so if you get to a bit where there's a problem, see if you can adjust that bit of the image to more, just a little to represent the bit that you're missing. That's a good question. So, um, so I'll start just by using the word world because the other day, um, so I did these quotes with the other group the other day and I basically got these quotes about five minutes before the lesson. So I hadn't even read them. Um, I just got a whole heap of cool Albert Einstein quotes and I was like, no, I'm going to do it at the same time as them because sometimes that helps because you see my thought process as I try and work out a solution. And, you know, I remembered the quotes and then, um, and then I was cooking dinner later on that night and I thought, oh, hopefully I've still got those quotes. And so I just went back through them to check that I had them and I paused at the word world because I couldn't remember whether it was world or globe or universe. So I was like, was it world? Was it globe? Was it universe? So if I was trying to remember these for long term, or if this was a speech I wanted to deliver, what you'd do is you'd go back to the text. First thing is, you know, you circle it. Okay, this is my problem word that I'm for some reason not getting. And then I need to make sure that I say world and not globe or universe. So then I go, okay, well, if it was globe, I would have chosen a light globe, probably, or I, you know, it, it would have been something different. So it's not globe. And why is it not universe? Well, maybe if it was universe, I would have chosen the picture of a world, but I would have made sure it looked like I had universities all over it or something. So basically it's more like you just go through a thought process to, um, to eliminate the ones that it's not. And by doing that thought process, the next time I went to do it, I remembered, I went to go, I paused and then I went world. Cause I, and I didn't even have to think through the alternatives because somewhere in the back of your brain, you know, the, our brains are like spider webs, it picked up the right word. If that didn't work and I went back the next day and I was still pausing there and going, is it globe or is it, I would probably put something on the world to remind me that it started with a W or something that sounded like world. So some other clue on the image. But the first thing I do is try and yeah, go through a th thought process to eliminate the other options because you're trying to keep your image as simple as possible. Like if I don't need to put, um, this is going to be a bit abstract for you, sorry. Um, if I had to remember that it was world because I was struggling, I, the, word, the letter W, I always put two U's as in sheep because and it's just a code I have now like a done it so many times that it's natural to me. So if I kept getting that wrong, I would have seen the world, but I would have seen use or sheep all over it. And that would then trigger the right word for me. But the reason I don't want to do that straight up is because it's just too confusing in a month when I go back and I go, why am I seeing a world with sheep all over it? You know, so we are trying to make it as simple as possible. Um, so that's, so that would be for the word world. So for in circles, I was also worried about the world word in circles when I first did it. I got it right for some reason, but um, so in circles rather than just circles, you'd need to think of something and it doesn't have to be an image. Like I said, again, it could just be the thought process of it that while you're creating this image, you go, okay. Um, it's not just in, it's not just circles though. It's in circles. So, you know, and I would kind of go, okay, what does that remind me of? And it reminds me a little bit of like encyclopedia or, um, you know, energize or energy. So maybe if it was if it was energy circles, then it would be going super quick because it's got lots of energy. And so I haven't really changed the image, but I'm just using a thought process to make sure that next time I come back to it and repeat it, 
when you and you'll see it naturally for yourself as you practice this you'll go you'll go to pause again but you'll go oh no it's end circles and you won't even need to go through the same thought process again it's it's you've done it once so that neural pathway has been created